In every line of work there are psychos, people who just take it a little too far and even some who enjoy making other people suffer. When your job is to be a professional sportsman in one of the most brutal sports on the planet, if you're a bit of a vindictive sicko it stands out like a sausage chisel at a vegan protest. You're watching Distracted Sports, I gouge that like button, and with the help of the good community of folks at Reddit, this is the top 10 biggest grubs in rugby. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I have a pretty new sport slash rugby channel, and for that channel to, you know, be a thing, I need to make content, and as much as I'd like to make a piece on the great coaching of Ian Foster every week, I don't think my soul could take that. Now sadly, I'm not as, as insightful, analytical and witty as Squidge, not as knowledgeable and good with a whiteboard as Two Cents Rugby, and I don't have the dulcet tones of Hamish from the Kiwi Lads, who provides the best alternative live streaming rugby commentary on the internet. No, for me, I rely on my vague recollection of games from the past, my uninformed emotive responsive to what's happening now, my ability to edit my head into weird places, and of course, tried and true gimmicky YouTube tropes like Top 10 lists. So with this in mind, I went to the well of knowledge and opinion of all things rugby, which is the Rugby Union subreddit, and typed in who were the biggest grubs in the history of the game, bracket on bracket, dirtiest players. And you wouldn't believe it, but people on the internet aren't shy of expressing their opinions. Now I've tallied the results based on mentions and upvotes, and here are those who dabble in the dark arts, the top 10 grubs in the history of the game, according to some folks on Reddit. Number 10, Andrew Hoare, the man was tougher than a steak deep fried in marine mammal lard. Now, I think this bloke was included on the list for an absurd, horrific off the field incident as much as what happened on the field. There isn't a stack of readily available footage of Andrew Hoare doing duty foul shit, but of course there is this one thing, this pretty intense thuggish cheap shot straight to the head of Welshman Bradley Davis as they were both heading towards the same ruck. Now the act was none too tidy and Davis went down like a Cardiff girl after a big night on the Jaeger bombs. Now what may have driven this hard man of the international game to be on the list more than anything else is back in 2005 Hoare and some of his inbred mates decided to take a break from impregnating sheep and for whatever reason started shooting seals on the coast of Otago for a laugh. For the record one was found dead. Footage from a nearby tourist vessel was handed to the police and Hoare was found guilty and had to pay a $2,500 fine. Hoare and his mates are still the only people in New Zealand to have been found guilty of killing marine animals. The judge called the incident a grossly irresponsible spontaneous act of hooliganism. Pretty much the same description as what he did to Davis. Number 9, Dane Coles, another Kiwi hooker to make the list and maybe the gobbiest man in rugby. Oh, not only was he a master of the dark arts of the game, but he also struggled with simple comprehension of the card system. Surprising stuff. Here he pins Mitchell Hunt's face into the ground like a bullying big brother. Here he gives an Argentine player a little love tap, reversing an All Black penalty. In the first game, the All Blacks lost to Argentina. He started pulling hair before it was cool, and has even been known to instigate massive fights and trial games. He's been a mongrel in the All Black pack for years now, and oppositions hate him, but as an admitted one-eyed All Blacks fan, I kind of like having him around. We don't have much else up front. Number 8, Corne Krieger, a man who looks like he's been chiseled out of pure South African biltong, was another one who was known to let the moment get the best of him when he crossed those white lines. One particularly notorious game where the Ball West Brotherhood was getting stuffed, he decided the pommy halfback Matt Dawson was far too lippy and he had to take him out. I thought to myself, you know, I need to get him off the field. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to look for an opportunity. Anyway, the opportunity presented itself. Now, look, he did achieve his objective of shutting up Dawson, but proving karma is one weird bitch, Krieger knocked out his own teammate, Andre Pretorius, who was on the other end of his swinging arm, and he knocked him spark out. Knocking out two men in one hit. Well, if it wasn't a sinister premeditated dog act, you'd almost be impressed. He also spear tackled Gareth Davis and in another double knockout of which he seems to be the king of, he knocks out himself and Christian Cullen in this classic collision. Look how high my boy Cullen bounces. It's crazy shit. Number seven, Michael Rhodes, the pretty boy whose career started in South Africa and continued to England. So he's a bit here and a bit there, but on the field he is 100% that bitch. He looks like the kind of guy who would hit on your missus right in front of you as you just sat there helplessly. This thuggish stomping of John Ross's face is sickening. When you look at it for what it is, it's a deliberate stomping with steel sprigs to another human's face with the intent to maim. It's moist. 
Now I don't mean moist in the sense of it being slightly wet, I mean moist is in the sense of the word that it's the worst word in the English language to hear or to say, and this guy is the personification of moist. He's more moist than the moistest moisture farmer. He continually enters rucks targeting opponent's head, and this is some filthy shit. This neck roll could have broken Siali Piatau's neck. Thankfully he got clocked for the moist bitch he is. I think he would have been higher in this list, but he's not a good enough player to be front of mind. Number 6, Duncan McRae. Now, me thinks this New South Welshman made the list for one single incident, where he answered that age-old question, what happens when you kick an Australian in the nuts? Well, apparently this. In this game between New South Wales and the British and Irish Lions, McRae bludgeons Ryan O'Gara's face into the dust as if he was tenderising meat. But in an interview with Sean Maloney many years later, he claimed that O'Gara engaged in a bit of foul play in the lead up and to top it off, kicked him right in the Gregan. He kicked me straight in the nuts ah. and, I, and so I've just pinned him and Red the rest is history, yeah. you know? Clearly, for this act, he deserved to be sent off in any era. But Phil Kearns in reason 6,754 proved why he is the biggest joke of a rugby commentator to walk the planet as he had this to say. Oh, uh, Stewie Dickinson, you have had a shocker. Number five, another gobby niggly shite that partakes in the dark arts of hookerish play. This is the third Kiwi born hooker on the list, but England, you can take responsibility for this guy. Dylan Hartley, known for supreme diplomacy when communicating with refs, and his total respect of the laws. Not! <laughs> Dylan unloads at other men's faces more than a gay porn star. Some grubs are sneaky and seem to get away with it in the dark spaces. Not Dylan though, he's pretty dumb about his grabbiness and collects more cards than a Pokemon trading card collector. Dylan will also be forever hated in the country of his birth for this criminal hit on the chosen one, St. Richie McCaw of the Breakdown, who as we all know was the most honourable law abiding player in the history of the game. He's also been found guilty of biting and eye gouging, I couldn't find the footage, I'm sorry, and has spent a total of 60 weeks suspended from the game. Despite being clearly a great player, for any team he played for, he was definitely a liability. Number 4. If he wasn't a rugby player, he would have been the head henchman for a Bond villain. Bucky's Botha. Bucky's Botha is the epitome of Neforsa. The cornerstones of his game were intimidation, inflicting massive amounts of pain, and kissy faces. Cause, you know, what are you gonna do to that guy? Now the main incident that springs to mind is a deliberate headbutt to the back of Jimmy Cowan's head, and it has a thug rating of straight up the man is about as big and as menacing as a player can be, which is what you want out of a player like Bucky's. But he does appear to enter collisions and breakdowns with serious intent to f someone's shit up. Often using his own head as a blunt force instrument of torture, he was a tormentor in the world of the dark arts, niggle, off the ball player, and even as you can see here, will get up to mischief between another man's legs. Was he a great player? Absolutely. Was he a grub? Oh, you goddamn right he was. Number three, this slab of Argentinian meat uses his shoulder as a weapon of mass destruction. Thomas Lavanini is certainly not afraid of headhunting, clearing rucks with the intent to concuss. But the unintelligible Mr. Lavanini is a specialist in the malicious cannonball tackle, where if you're on the receiving end, you can easily endure a serious, potentially career-ending leg injury. Lavanini doesn't strike you as the type of player who can sometimes get caught up in the moment and make a rash decision. Here's the vibe of a bit of a sicko who's happy to injure. This guy is still playing and probably will continue to injure his opponents. Number two, Callum Clark looks like the type of guy that killed his pets for fun as a child. A cheap shot artist with clear rage issues. A player whose actions were often not done in the dark places, but as an indication that he's not the full shilling, done right in clear sight of the referee. Now, if it was just a bit of thuggery here and a bit of a dangerous neck roll there, I'm not sure if he would have made this list, let alone being so high on it. If it wasn't for this disgusting, malicious act that proves that he is the one that knocks. He's a bit evil, and he does an act that belongs in a UFC octagon, not a rugby rectangle. As he effectively arm bars his opponent, he isolates the arm, leverages it against his body, hyperextending it beyond the elbow joint, causing a serious elbow break and excruciating pain to his victim. It's no accident, he's fully aware of the scum act he's perpetrating. Not that it matters, it actually happens after the whistle. He got a 30 game suspension and in any other walk of life he would have got prison time. I can't think of a funny way to say this, but judging from this dog act, Callum Clark is a piece of shit. And number one, was there ever any doubt, 
When I think of on the field grubs, he's the first sicko that comes to mind. He's the man with sticky fingers and a 70s porno moustache. Mr. Richard Lowe, ladies and gentlemen. To people born in my generation, he is the definition of a thug. The definition of a grub. But he was also a lad who didn't mind giving someone a gobful or keeping younger squad members in line. He wasn't the biggest front wall the world had ever seen, but sweet Jesus, he was a grub. Have I mentioned that? Now, the two most famous malicious incidents in Mr. Richard Lowe's portfolio of infamy, the Carosa nose smash and the sickening Greg Cooper eye gouge. Paul Carosa clearly scores a try and after he scored, Lowe drops a forearm with direct force to the nose of the try scorer. Asked many years later whether he did it on purpose, his response was, Yeah, uh, I probably did it on the day. Yeah. For anyone else's career, that would be the top of the thug list. Not for our Mulu man, Richard Lowe. Because in the 1992 NPC final against Otago, back when the NPC final was one of the biggest events to be on the rugby calendar in New Zealand, he found his All Black teammate, Greg Cooper, at the bottom of a ruck, and then with two fingers and both eyes, just got stuck in. It's actually sick to watch the fire in Lowy's eyes as he's doing it with wild intent. It's straight cold blooded. I've said some pretty horrid stuff about the other grubs on this list. I called Duncan McRae moist for Pete's sake, but I still struggle to say mean things about Richard Lowe, even though he is pretty awful. I'm a Kiwi and for whatever reason, he's a cult hero in this country, despite the fact he was clearly a malicious sicko in the rugby field. And for this reason, the good people of the rugby union subreddit Mr. Richard Lowe, you are the number one grub in the history of the game of Rugby Union. Thank you to all the people on the subreddit who helped make this video. I really appreciate you guys partaking. That was great. Now, the last time I made a top 10 list, I copped a bunch of shit from people who disagree with me. And you know what? Welcome, I welcome it. Come at me, good sirs, and the 4.5% of you are, that are good ladies. Let me know who your top thugs were. And you know what? I might make a part two of this list. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. Go follow me on Twitter at Tones88. And if you're really into my brand of nonsense, consider being a patron at my Patreon site. The link might be here or in the description. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching. Bearsies.